our trumpet call. When God's trumpet call summons us to meet Jesus Christ, we should be spiritually ready to meet our Savior. Here's Dr. Gene Getz. The trumpet blast was very important in the Old Testament. And it's very important when it comes to the New Testament, as we'll look at in just a moment. In Numbers chapter 10, verses 1 to 4, this is what we read. The Lord spoke to Moses, Make two trumpets of hammered silver to summon, and that's the key phrase, underscore that in your mind, to summon the community and have the camps set out. Now, obviously there was a tremendous communication problem here. They didn't have loudspeakers. How are they going to amplify and, and get people to hear? They have to call them. And one thing that could penetrate the sound barrier for these people were these two trumpets. And so the two trumpets had different signals. And basically it was to summon the attention of the people. There's something special that is going to be said either directly from God or through Moses to the people, through what God has already revealed. So let me start that paragraph over. The Lord spoke to Moses, make two trumpets of hammered silver to summon the community and have the camps set out. When both are sounded in long blasts, the entire community is to gather before you at the entrance to the tent of meeting. <laughs> Imagine that, two million plus people. That's huge. Um, Moses evidently had to develop his ability to communicate, or if he couldn't communicate to everybody, he would communicate to the leaders of Israel, who would then communicate on to smaller groups. We saw that happening uh, when the children of Israel came out of captivity and came back. You read about that in the book of Ezra, where smaller groups would gather and individuals would interpret what is being said. So they worked that out. However, the passage continues, if one is sounded, only the leaders. See, there was a, a, a signal. If two blasts, two trumpets, the whole community. One, just the leaders, because God has something special to say to the leaders. The heads of Israel's clans are to gather before you. So this is their communication system, these trumpets. Uh, verse 10 uh, elaborates. You are to sound the trumpets over your burnt offerings, your fellowship sacrifices, on your joyous occasions, your appointed festivals, and the beginning of each of your months. They will serve as a reminder for you before your God, I am the Lord your God, to gather, to come together, to worship God in these special ways. So there was multiple use of these trumpets. And I don't think it's insignificant. Now, one of these days, as believers, we're going to hear a trumpet blast that summons us to gather together in a way that's absolutely incredible. And we read about that in 1 Corinthians. This is our trumpet call. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Listen, Paul said, writing to the Corinthians, I'm telling you a mystery. We will not all fall asleep. We will not all die. Asleep there is a word it's a euphemism for death. We will not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. I think that is a literal blast from God Himself. A trumpet. And so you see the extension of this way of communicating right on into the New Testament. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. I don't understand all the dynamics of that, how a trumpet blast could be heard by everybody, but with God all things are possible. We have another passage, 1 Thessalonians. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God. In essence, Jesus will give the blast of that trumpet. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are still alive, when the Lord Jesus comes back, when that trumpet sounds, we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we'll be always 
with the Lord. What an incredible experience that will be. And that's why I call this our trumpet call. And so the reflection response question is, in view of the fact that God's trumpet could sound and Jesus Christ could come at any moment, and it could happen at any moment, I know I don't stop and think about that enough when I begin the day or throughout the day. In view of the fact that God's trumpet could sound and Jesus Christ could come at any moment, how should we live our lives as Christians from day to day? Well, there's a, a marvelous principle that comes from uh, Titus, which reads this way. I've called it motivated by God's grace. To help Christians live godly lives, we should motivate them by clearly teaching the wonders of God's saving grace. And then that's spelled out in Titus uh, chapter 2 where Paul wrote to Titus, who's on the island of Crete, setting in order the church there after the church was established. And he says, For the grace of God has appeared with salvation for all people, instructing us to, first on the negative side, deny godlessness and worldly lusts, but on the positive side, to live in a sensible, righteous, and godly way in the present age. That is this time we're living today. While we what? Wait for the blessed hope, the sound of the trumpet. While we wait for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. He gave Himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for Himself as a special people eager to do God's work. And I believe that in view of the trumpet call, it will be called, which will be blasted out at some point in time, in a moment, it ought to affect the way we live. I don't think about that enough. Because we will meet Jesus face to face at that moment. And by the way, this is a great message to people who don't know the Lord. Uh, my good friend, Jerry Jenkins, I've had the privilege of serving with him as a trustee at Moody Bible Institute. And I've gotten to know him very well. In fact, he was a student of mine, would you believe it, way back at, when I taught at Moody Bible Institute. That dates me. But Jerry Jenkins wrote a series with Tim LaHaye called Left Behind. And it's a series that God's used in a marvelous way to bring many to Jesus Christ. And when I think about that series, Left Behind, and the series of books, particularly the first three books that were written, my mind goes back to when I was not a believer, and I read a book uh, that was very similar to the first book that Jerry wrote with Tim LaHaye called In the Twinkling of an Eye. It was written back in the 30s, I think. And I read that as a young boy, about 15 years of age. And I wasn't a believer. It so impacted my life that, that ultimately God used it to bring me to Christ. Because I didn't want to be left behind. And then I read a second book that scared me to death called The Mark of the Beast. <laughs> Dealing with the Antichrist. And of course, in the series, the Left Behind series, they deal with that as well. So God uses this doctrine not only for those of us who are believers to live the way we ought to live as Christians, but it, God uses this doctrine for unbelievers to be ready, and they can be ready, so we're not left behind. And uh, it's a great and marvelous truth. So, here's the principle. When God's trumpet call summons us to meet Jesus Christ, we should be spiritually ready to meet our Savior.